Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we're going to be discussing Pythagorean Theorem and the converse of the Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem says that if you have a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We know that a and b are the legs of the triangle. Those are the two sides that are touching the right angle. And the hypotenuse we always label as c. The hypotenuse is across from the right angle, and it's always the longest side. With Pythagorean Theorem, we have the Pythagorean triples. These are sets of three numbers, a, b, and c, that satisfy the Pythagorean triple. Note, whenever we write them, we'll write them in parentheses in numerical order, smallest to largest, a, comma, b, comma, c. So these are the most common Pythagorean triples that you are expected to memorize. The first is the 3, 4, 5 triangle. Next, we have the 5, 12, 13. Then there's the 8, 15, 17 and then the 7, 24, 25. There are many more Pythagorean triples you are welcome to look up on your own and use in class, but these four are the ones I require you to know. Also, any of the original Pythagorean triples have multiples. So, for example, if we multiplied a 3, 4, 5 by 2, then we would get a 6, 8, 10. Or if we multiplied it by 3, we would get a 9, 12, 15. So all multiples of these originals that I asked you to memorize are also fair game on all tests and quizzes. Now let's look at this example. Find x. So we're given a triangle, and we see they've given us the leg 6 and the leg 8, and we are looking for the hypotenuse x. So we know Pythagorean Theorem says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if I plug in my sides, that's going to be 6 squared plus 8 squared equals x squared. We know that 6 squared is 36 and 8 squared is 64. So add that together, 100 is equal to x squared. Now if we want to get x by itself, so get rid of the square, we're going to have to take the square root of both sides. And so that gives us that x equals 10. So the hypotenuse of this triangle is 10. Some of you may have noticed at the beginning that this is a multiple of a Pythagorean triple. So this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle multiplied by 2. So that would be a 6, 8, 10. So if you remember that, you could write this down, the 3, 4, 5, arrow, 6, 8, 10. That would be how you'd show your work. And therefore, x is equal to 10. Now look at this triangle. They give you the legs of 5 and x, and then they give you a hypotenuse of 13 and ask you to find x. So again, I'm going to write down my Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. When I plug in, it's very important that I put my x in the correct place. If we look, x is one of the legs. It's one of the sides touching the right angle, so that means it's going to go in for either a or b. In this case, I put it in as my b. So 5 squared plus x squared equals 13 squared. So I know that 5 squared is 25, and 13 squared is 169, so I'm going to plug that in. Then I need to subtract 25 from both sides. So I have x squared is equal to 144. After I take the square root of both sides, then I see that x is equal to 12. Also, some of you may have noticed that this was a triple. It was a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So if you were taking a test or a quiz, you would write down the Pythagorean triple 5, 12, 13, and then you could say that x is equal to 12. Now let's try a word problem. A 25-foot ladder rests against the side of the house. The base of the ladder is 6 feet away. Approximately how high off the ground is the top of the ladder? And then round your answer to the nearest tenth. The first thing you should do when you're given a word problem is draw a picture. So here I have drawn a house and a ladder. I have labeled my ladder as 25 feet long, and I've labeled the distance on the ground between the house and the ladder as 6 feet. So now we know that the ground and the house are perpendicular to each other. So I'm going to draw a right angle. So this is a right triangle. I can use Pythagorean theorem, and I'm going to be solving for the height of the ladder. So I'm going to label that height that the ladder reaches on the house as h. So I'm going to write down my Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So h squared plus 6 squared equals 25 squared. I know that my ladder is my hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. So h squared plus 36 equals 625. Subtract 36 from both sides. So h squared is equal to 589. I just want to solve for h, so I need to take the square root of both sides. And when you type that in your calculator, you find that h, the height that is from the ground to the top of the ladder, is 24.3 feet. Make sure that if you have units in your problem, you're putting units in your answer. 
Now let's talk about the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. This says that if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then you have a right triangle. So this just states that if your sides satisfy this equation, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then it's a right triangle. Also make sure you note that c is always your largest side. So in this example below, we can see we have 3 root 34. Well, we can't really compare if 3 root 34 is larger than 15, so we need to type it in our calculator and find the decimal approximation. So when I type that in my calculator, I see that 3 root 34 is about 17.5. So that means that 3 root 34 is going to be my hypotenuse, so it's going to be my c in the equation. So in this case, I'm going to write c squared and then leave a blank because I don't know if it's equal or not. I have to wait till the end to fill that blank in. a squared plus b squared. Since 3 root 34 was my largest side, that is my c. And then I'm going to fill in my 9 for a and my 15 for b. So I have 3 root 34 squared box, 9 squared plus 15 squared. When we have a whole number and a radical combination, to a power, we need to distribute that power. So when I'm evaluating 3 square roots of 34 squared, I'm going to do 3 squared and the square root of 34 squared. So 3 squared is 9, and then the square root of 34 squared, the square root and the square cancel out, so you're left with 34. So on my left, I have 9 times 34, and then on the right, 81 plus 225. So when I look at this, I see that 9 times 34 is 306, and 81 plus 225 is 306. So since our two values are equal, that means that yes, this is a right triangle. Using the converse of the Pythagorean theorem, we are able to classify our triangles. So we know that if c squared equals a squared plus b squared, then we have a right triangle. But if c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, we have an acute triangle. And if c squared is larger than a squared plus b squared, then we have an obtuse triangle. So if we have the three side lengths, we are able to classify that triangle by its angles. Let's try this example. If we are given the side lengths 4.3, 5.2, and 6.1, well, the first thing we always, always need to check is, is this a triangle? We know that for a triangle to exist, the two smaller sides added together must be larger than the largest side. So in this case, that's 4.3 plus 5.2 must be bigger than 6.1. When you add them together, you get 9.5 is bigger than 6.1. So yes, these three side lengths can make a triangle. Now, if we want to classify the triangle by sides, we're going to need to plug into Pythagorean theorem. So 6.1 is our largest side, so I'm going to put a star above 6.1. That's my hypotenuse, so that's going to be my C. So 6.1 squared, we put a box because we don't know what kind of symbol is going there. And then 4.3 squared plus 5.2 squared. When you type this in the calculator, you have 37.21 and then box, 18.49 plus 27.0. When you add that together, you have 37.21 is less than 45.33. So that means our C side, our largest side, is smaller than the other two. So if we look up here, that will be our middle statement. So that means that this is an acute triangle. Now, pause the video and try this one on your own. So the first thing we need to do is decide which side is our C, which one is our longest side. So since I couldn't compare 3 root 5 to 6, I converted it to a decimal and got 3, 6.7. So that means that 3 root 5 is my longest side. So now I need to set up my problem, C squared blank, A squared plus B, plug in my pieces, 3 root 5 squared blank, 2 squared plus 6 squared, Remember, we need to square both pieces of our radical term. So 3 squared is 9, and the square root of 5 squared, the square root and the radical cancel out, so you're just left with 5. Box, 4 plus So that gives you 45 and 40. So 45 is larger than 40. So that means c squared is bigger than a squared plus b squared. So that means this triangle is obtuse. Now, write down these two examples and try them on your own, and we will check them in class next time. And that is everything I have for you this evening. See you in class.